Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I just bought an amazing E EVSC. So this is not a charger. I would be okay if you uh, called it a charging cord. It is, of course, an EVSC, which stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. So it safely supplies electricity to your vehicle. Now, I already have one of these. I happen to have a 30 amp General Electric brand EVSC that I use all the time, but I was looking for a portable one that I could run on 240 volts and ideally also be able to run it on 120 volts. And this looks to me exactly like the EVSC that's included with the newer Chevy Volts. It's the same size and shape case. Uh, it's the same cord. Uh, the connector on the end is a little bit different and the graphic is different, but otherwise it looks exactly the same. So I'm wondering, is this actually the exact same charging cord? Is it the same circuit board inside? So let's open it up, take a look at the guts, see what we can find out. So if we come in closer on the unit, we can see it's a pretty basic J1772 connector, nothing too fancy here. It does have a little hole you could stick a padlock through if you wanted, and it is made by Delphi. Then on the actual box itself, um, right here we have our 240 volts, 60 hertz, 16 amps, or 3840 watts. Now since it's 16 amps, that means you can't plug this into just a plain old 15 amp outlet, so you need a better connector. So this is a NEMA 1430 connector, and that's uh, higher than the 16 amps, it's 30 amps. So that's what is going to be used to plug into the wall. Now this is the same as a NEMA 1450, which is pretty common at RV parks and places like that, except the neutral prong is different. On the 30 amp, it is a uh, an L shape and on the 50 amp it is straight. Now also if we take a look here we will see that these are all tamper resistant screws which I absolutely love because I think everybody should have one of these. I call this the Tinkerer's Toolkit. Uh, it's a whole collection of various bits for tamper resistant screws. I went through them and I found this bit right here which on the side of it it actually says CR-VT10, and it fits exactly these screws. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll take all these screws out and then we can look inside the box. So what do you think we're gonna see inside here? I don't know. Wow. Well, one thing I see right away on the inside of the cover, it does again say Delphi, manufactured by Delphi there. And if I look in here, it is a red circuit board and it clearly says Clipper Creek. Uh, on the circuit yeah. board, it says PCS Gen 2 V5.1, part number 1007-0068. So we'll, uh, we'll go to some macro video and get in here really close, but just for clarity, this is the end that the power comes in from. It's just a short one foot cord. Then the power is completed with these uh, two relays over here uh, that turn on once the other end is connected to the car, and that allows the 240 volt power to pass through all the way out to the other end and go to your car. A uh, couple of things that I'm seeing in here right away is that there's a couple of holes at the bottom here that actually aren't used. So if we look over on this side, there's these uh, two unused connectors right here and they're marked thermal ground and thermal in and those are used on the Chevy the generation 2 Chevy Volt EVSC that's using if not this identical board one very very similar to it and those go out to the wall power plug end because that's only a, a, a 15 amp plug on there so apparently there's a thermal sensor that feeds back to here from the plug end but that is not used uh, with the 30 amp cord on this 16 amp unit. The other thing that's kind of nice is this is just a plain little gasket in here uh, for the waterproofing. And I like that they use these tamper resistant screws because a lot of times if tamper resistant screws aren't used, manufacturers instead use a glue. And you know, if you take a box apart, uh, you have to break it open and then glue it back together when you're done. This I can just uh, reassemble real easy. 
One other thing I'd really like to point out on this unit, again with uh, this end being the wall power side, so this is the power coming in from that 30 amp cord. If we look where it actually connects here, how that's labeled, it's labeled as line one in on the black wire and line two slash N in on the red wire. So in this case, we've got a leg one of our 240 volt power and leg two of our 240 volt power, but that N definitely implies neutral, that we would have our black wire and a white wire for 120 volt power. And I've seen photos of the Chevy Volt, uh, the Gen 2 Chevy Volt EVSE, and it does indeed have a white wire running into that uh, line 2 slash N in connection right here where we see a red wire. So the other thing is uh, looking at any of these components in here, uh, looks like they're all rated for 250 volts AC, um, which of course it would have to be because it's designed to run on 240 volts AC here. Um, but I'm trying to see if there's anything that um, makes me think that it shouldn't be able to run on 120 volts. And at this point, I'm just not seeing it. Oh, I did just recall uh, something. Remember here that on this connector, uh, this is the neutral. And actually right in the instruction manual, it actually says that the neutral is not used at all. And inside the box, the white wire from the cord is actually just terminated. It's just hanging there with a little piece of uh, black heat shrink tubing over it. So it's literally just cut off. So that means that because the only difference between a NEMA uh, 1430 and a NEMA 1450 is that neutral prong, in this case, you actually could literally cut that connector off and this would then fit either a NEMA 1430 or a NEMA 1450 connector. So that might be kind of a handy thing because you'd have two different connectors and you wouldn't need any kind of an adapter. Um, the only downside to that really is this might fit a little bit more loosely into the plug just because the fourth plug on here kind of makes it a little bit more rock solid. Um, so I think what we'll do now is I'm going to put this back together and then we'll plug it into the wall right back here on 240 volt power, show you how it works. So this would be considered a portable style of EVSE, but it'd still be nice to have a way to mount this to the wall. So on the back, there's actually just kind of a, a pair of hooks that a screw head will fit into. One thing that's kind of nice is they face both directions, so you could mount this right side up or upside down. Um, and in the manual, they also tell you how far apart to put those screws. So I already put two screws on the wall and I can just hook this right on. So I've already got the two screws over here. So I can just hook this onto the wall, slide it down. Eh, it holds on pretty good. I mean, it would be easy to knock off, but again, it's portable. It's not really designed so much for permanent mounting. And then uh, keeping in mind that the ground goes up on this style connector, just plug it in. Now, unfortunately, uh, there's not also like a hook or something for this to go on. So for the, the main cord, you might want to just put a hook on the wall. And then I'll turn on power at the circuit breaker box. We see a little boot up sequence. And then our power indicator turns green. So I have tested out the Amazing E EVSE with my Mitsubishi iMeV electric car. Just plugs it right in. Charge is great. This is a 16 amp EVSC here, and that's the maximum that the car can run at anyways. Now, I do also have a 30 amp EVSC, and part of the reason why I originally went with a 30 amp, even though I wasn't gonna be using it right away, is it's good for future proofing, and it's also good for guest charging if somebody stops by in uh, a Chevy Bolt or a Tesla, something like that, they can make use of that 30 amps. Uh, when the 16 amps would still provide power, but just not as uh, high of a rate. Um, the other thing that I've noticed with this though, is that there's no indicator that the car is connected and charging. 
really all there is is just that green light on there saying that you've got power to it uh, and then the red light flashes if there's some sort of a if there's some sort of a problem whereas on my uh, my main 30 amp EVSE it actually has kind of a nice feature that there's a big green light that turns on when you're actually plugged in and charging so just as a visual confirmation I kind of like having that so overall, this EVSE works great on 240 volt power. That's what it's advertised for. Uh, but it does look just like that Gen 2 Chevy Volt EVSE, which is designed for 120 volt power, but some folks did find out actually can also run on 240. So it's a combo level one, level two EVSE, which I'd love to have that. But at this point, I don't know if this one can do that. Now, uh, I don't have an adapter that'll go from that 30 amp connector to just kind of your typical 120 volt Edison plug or NEMA uh, 515 connector. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 30 amp connector up here and I'm going to temporarily rewire it. And then that way I'll be able to get 120 volts. So uh, give me a minute to rewire that and then we'll test it on 120 volt power. Okay, so I just rewired this for 120 volt power. Um, I'll turn power on at the breaker box over here and we'll see what happens. Hopefully no magic smoke getting let out. So here we go. So unfortunately it looks like this unit is not going to run on 120 volt power. Um, I can't say I'm not a little bit disappointed because it means if I'm out traveling I would need to carry a 120 and a 240 volt uh, EVS with, EVSE with me. Um, I don't know what to say. It's apparently just designed for 240 volt power. Even right in the instruction manual, it does actually give a range of voltages that are kind of the high to low range of what 240 volt power typically can be. And it does not even get close to uh, as low as 120 volts. So a little disappointed there. Uh, if you know of any hacks uh, how to change this, please let me know. Uh, also, if you are a Gen 2 Chevy Volt driver and you will take your EVSE apart, uh, take a look at the circuit board that's in there. See if the, these are the exact same circuit boards or if there's a, they're a very slightly different version. And please let me know. I'd appreciate that. Okay, so here's my overall thoughts on the Amazing E EVSE. Overall, I like it. Uh, it does that full 16 amps, so that's full speed charging for a Mitsubishi iMeve, a Chevy Volt, uh, the older Nissan Leafs. Uh, the other thing is it's very inexpensive. I bought this on eBay for $221. It is literally the least expensive level two charger that I could find, period. And it looks like it's all made out of quality parts. It's uh, Clipper Creek circuit board on the inside. Uh, it's got some nice molding on the plug here. I like the strain relief connections that are on this. Um, I don't love the little connectors here for just the two screws to hold it on the wall. Seems a little chintzy. I might maybe add a strap across the top of this or a zip tie, something like that, just so it doesn't get knocked off the wall. But at the same time, it's a portable charger. It's not really designed for uh, permanent installation. Although I have seen on some, uh, some other EVSC that they actually have like a little piece of a rope right here uh, just to hang from a nail, which I thought was kind of a nice low-tech solution. Uh, as for the 30 amp plug, I'm not in love with it in terms of I see a lot more of the 50 amp plugs in my area at state parks, RV parks, uh, fairgrounds, uh, places where people might be plugging in uh, big camping trailers at 240 volt power. So possibly I might actually consider cutting this neutral connector off of here to make this compatible with both NEMA 1450 and 1430. So in short, this is a great level two charger at a really good price, but it doesn't do level one. If you figure out a good hack as to how to make it do that, let me know. And until next time, stay charged up.